Okay, here we go, folks. Thank you for coming. I'm Adam. I wrote this book with a lot of help from amazing people. And this workshop is uh, it's centered around this book, but you know, we can just talk about, I, I have, a, there's a lot of things um, I have lined up we can do uh, if we want to go different directions, but I'd love to hear if you are self-hosting, how it's going, what you're using, um, stuff like that. Is anybody on the chat? Curious, no, okay. So folks online, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna be able to field questions because I can't run a chat and a talk at the same time. So just some quick up updates for me and the book and the kind of the community that's springing up around it. Um, let's see, it's a lot of fun and I'm hearing from people that have read it or started working through it that uh, it's good. So um, feedback is good, sales are good. Um, but I don't think many people know about it, so I'm trying to get better at promotion and marketing, um, that kind of thing. Uh, just so you know, the book is available at any price you pick. Um, and I did this to prioritize distribution over profit. Um, a decision I question every day, but it's going very well. No, no, I, I think it's, it's awesome. And I think it's, um, doing what I, what I was hoping. Um, there are many, many ways to self-host is if, if you've done this at all, you'll find that there's not only many tools you could self-host, but many ways to host them. It's overwhelming. Um, but uh, with this system, this is a learning tool. So it's designed to teach you uh, how to host with specifically um, a Linux server, Docker Compose, these are just some tools you can use though. There's infinite ways to do it. Um, so, but what I did do recently is I added a couple extensions. So I demonstrate, oh, you want PyHole? Well, here's how to add it to this system. And it's actually a recipe that would work for anybody using Docker. And even if you didn't use Docker, you just, you know, copy the settings and flip it on. I mean, really the PyHole folks have done the hard work of making it portable and easy to host and all that. Um, DocuSeal is an interesting one I, I'm really excited to talk about because um, have you guys ever used like DocuSign or HelloSign? Stupid. And you put like a picture of your signature and that, that's legally binding. So that's real. And <laughs> love it or leave it, it's here. And I'm like, but I hate those services. And now it's completely replaced with an open source. There's actually two that are pretty good, OpenSign and DocuSeal. DocuSeal looked easier to host. But what I what I noticed um, was that there was a little so I turned it on and it looked like let's see if I got it running here yeah so it, it looked like this and I got it running locally I got some weird host name who cares uh, I got it it's encrypted but there was a little thing up here right next to their DocuSign logo that said GitHub followers or stars or whatever 11k stars I'm like well I don't that doesn't feel right that that's showing up right there on when I'm hosting it. I bet they're tracking. And then I looked through their issue tracker and somebody else had asked about it and they said, oh yeah, you know, it just, it does grab th something from our server. And they were kind of, you know, well, that's about it. That's all we're going to say, whatever. And then issue's still there. So I brought it up again. I said, what the heck? I mean, hey Chase, take it out. Um, I'm going to delete, delete um, a couple lines uh, from their code. So I forked their code. And then I flipped over from their image that was sitting on Docker Hub and flipped over to mine. So the fork was a little bit of work, a few lines. Um, but for anybody that wants to use my fork, it's one line change. And um, they're using if they're using the method in this book. Oh, can you add? Wait, what's the next number? Eight. Okay. So you want to be in the drawing for a free book? Oh, that a kid. Woo. Okay. Well, you can play anyway if you want. You could give it to somebody else. Uh, anyway, so DocuSeal was tracking, and they were not super. I mean, they were they were not hiding the fact. I guess you can read you can read the transcript and decide for yourself because it's all it's all public, which is kind of cool. Um, but I said no. Here's a fork, and I posted it around, and folks were uh, excited and thankful. And I I just I just was kind of blown away with when you have the whole system in place, and you happen to be using you know you could do it with VMs, but with containers it's quite easy where you just you have the image. Well, now you can use my image if you want instead. I just, uh, there's a few lines of change upon their releases and I've just been merging in their latest changes. So it's not much to maintain. I didn't think I would keep maintaining it, but 
And I'm like, well, I don't want the tracking. So anyway, any questions about that? Is that making sense to folks? I don't know if I'm kind of shooting ahead, but I was really excited to share that part. Mm. Yeah, please. Yeah, let me let me summarize what Ed was, Ed was saying that uh, I'm brave to fork and then I mean now I have to maintain a fork. I mean I I just you know had a baby and now I got to raise it. Well, yeah, a fork is not no work. Absolutely. In this case, it's very it's quite minimal. And I mean I I was very upfront about that. In fact, I changed the readme and I'm like, listen, go see upstream first. But if you want to, you know, learn or look into a couple security privacy features, then try this out. And if you want to see exactly what's changed, click here. In fact, I can just show you the diff. Um, is this looking, is this big enough to see up there? Yes, no? Okay, appreciate that. Uh, okay, what's it called? DocuSeal. Okay. okay, so here's my fork and six commits ahead. Maybe I'd push the latest. Let's see. I said, I changed their readme and I said, listen, this is why I did this. Here's here's the limitations. Um, and then if you want to do it, go ahead. And then here's how to use it as well. It's quite it's quite simple. But it's kind of fun to see like the only changes that really matter. Uh, let's see, I think. And apologies for not doing this locally with open source. Uh, but you can, actually, I can just do it. Yeah, I can do it with, with uh, Git. So sorry, this is going to be small just for a second, but I'll go into my mirror, my working copy, docu seal, and then uh, so actually my master is um, my 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 master has my changes, and uh, it's, they named the branch master, so I don't know, I just I just used it the same name as theirs, and then my changes on top look like. Uh, let's see, upstream master. So, I mean, that's basically it, is taking out this this image. So I'm like, you know, I can maintain a fork like that. And then they haven't conflicted the readme yet, so <laughs> that's good to go so far. Sorry, did someone else just join? Do you want to be in the drawing for a free book? Okay, niner. <laughs> Number nine. Okay, anyway, any questions about that? Or Okay, I'm going to jump back into the presentation. Uh, I've taken a lot of typos and patches, including one from my dad. Pretty stoked. He found a typo and fixed it. And then I'm finding that I really do need folks to spread the word. So if this at all touches you, okay, 10 and 11, come on in. You're 10, you're 11. Just keep that in mind. Um, but I can't, you know, it's, I don't know, the way things work these days, I tried buying ads and I can generate traffic, but it's just low quality garbage traffic like people are just like okay i clicked on this thing out of out of duress and then i don't want to buy anything so it's like okay forget it if you like it let somebody know i'll be forever grateful okay any questions about the updates everything's on selfhostbook.com so i want to quickly check in uh i, I man i'm i wish we had hours but um we're, we're going to fit what we can into the next half hour and uh, I think we can do a lot of cool stuff. But I just wanted to know if you have something to share. Uh, I'd like to hear about your self-hosting or what you're interested in or, you know, so. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to open it up. And I'm going to moderate pretty tightly to keep it to keep it going. Um, so, but I'll, I'll try and let you share a little bit about your, uh, let's say, let's say you can say your name if you want and then kind of what you're doing lately, what you want to do. How about that? With self-hosting. Go for it. Tail scale. Yeah, I hear a lot about tail scale lately. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Related to self-hosting or just a hobby? Oh, okay, you're running it on your own hardware. 
Nej. Ja. Oh, nice. I have some other friends watching planes. That sounds like fun. Yeah. Yeah. Field skills enabled a lot of devices wherever you are. Yeah. Um, you know, let me get to what next in a second, but I just want to check. Is everybody familiar with tail scale somewhat? Okay. It's, it's a lightweight, uh, it's a way to set up your own private networks on top of the WireGuard VPN system, and it's really popular. And there's an open source version called HeadScale, which the TailScale folks also support. Okay, so in what next, Ed? Okay. Okay, self-hosted Git. Nice, nice. Git, oh, G I T E A. Okay, yeah. Cool. I'm using that too. Yeah. Right on. Anybody not using Git? I'm just curious. My gosh, I just, everywhere I go, I used to have to convince people to. Anyway, so I started an RCS. So there's my old guy cred. Uh, anyone else want to share? what you're doing, what you want to do. Yeah, go for it. Okay, so pause for a sec. So student uh, self-hosting using Oracle's free tier, and um, you have your own tailnet using Headscale. Okay. 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 I talk all about containers. Check it out. Oh, you have no? Did you already? VMs. Oh, okay. Cool. Right on. Uh, all right. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Uh, let's see. Did I get that all in the mic? I'm just cognizant of recording and who's online. Um, I think we got good parts. Anyone else? Okay. No pressure. Yeah. In the back. Yeah. Yeah. You're self-hosting now. You're looking for where to move stuff. Okay. Cool. All right. Well, um, what I'm hearing from users is like just the initial getting started steps are very challenging and not necessarily because they're not technical. I mean, they, they, it's, not a, it's not a matter of not knowing technical skills or details or background. It's more like, oh, your thing? Okay, getting oriented to it. Um, so, uh, in the context of this book, to get oriented, you need to know that you need some kind of machine to run it on. It's, it's based around running one server, and I kind of focus on that. Here's how to get your server running. Here's how to connect to it. Here's how to do a few things. Here's how to keep the changes to your server very small so you can rebuild it when it breaks and you need to. So, stuff like that. Um, I delivered two tools with it. So, Mario is a little wrapper around this thing called Ansible. Who's heard of Ansible? Oh, psh, man, I, I get that reaction a lot too. Like it's very widely used for system provisioning. So I try to keep it quite simple and let's say simplistic even because I don't want the, I didn't want it to be all about Ansible. I wanted it to be all about why you self-host, how you get the inspiration to do that and motivation to do that because sometimes that's the hardest thing and, and why you're doing it. So the values below why you make different decisions. Um, I, I spend a lot of time talking about that because that is quite a bit more timeless than what version of my MariaDB you have, happen to have to use for this version. I mean, all that stuff is just moving at breakneck pace. So I also made a little tool called DC. It just wraps 
Docker Compose because I was just having to type sudo Docker Compose and then usually the pass to the file name. So anyway, DC is very simple. It comes with it. Um, these emojis are pretty intentional um, because it's just like a visual indicator that command in the book is designed to be run on your admin computer versus uh, on your server. And so this is the HTML version of the book. And I'll just show you. Server. Okay, so there's an example of a code snippet designed to be run on your server, and it'll have that little, that same little uh, indicator that I put here in the. So, yeah, a few things get people hung up. It's like, oh, I have to edit a host file, and then I have to edit a config for Mario, the Ansible wrapper, and I need to like tweak my SSH config maybe. I've tried to pare it down to the bare minimal. I mean, it's it's a few lines really to get started, but there is quite a bit of background, and so I walk through that step by step. Okay, so that's the orientation about, got a bit about where you folks are at today, where you wanna go, and then um, uh, for readers, like how you get oriented to this system and learning through the system, so. Um, there are a couple examples of adding services that I, that I threw in there. Um, Anything that there's already an image for, a Docker image for, or even a Docker file that you can build yourself, it's super easy to add one more service. Generally, very, very simple. I mean, if they did their job well, then you should be able to do it in minutes. If they did it poorly, then you have to track down, oh, uh, what, what are the 10 environment variables I need to set to run? What's an example? Uh, Wallabag was pretty confusing. Um, so anybody use Wallabag? Oh, okay. Oh, this one's cool. So anybody use Pocket? Okay. Yeah. Do you like it? You do you use it a lot? Like, okay, so if you're watch if you're reading a blog post and you just wanna so here this is a blog post about where we are right now. <laughs> so if y'all wanna save this, I can send it to my Wallabag server. Uh, let's see if I can do it right now. So there's a little browser extension. And am I all online and ready to go? Uh Let's see. Okay, so now it's uh, Wallabag has pulled down the content, and then it's it's also synced to the Wallabag app on my phone. Um, so yeah, I don't know. To me, that was pretty like. I mean, it's all open source, so you can you can um, poke in the database and just grab. You can search. I mean, it's it's pretty dang sweet. So, and I have this forever. So I, I have the, the content is now cached and I got a copy um, that uh, th this is how I read, honestly. So, and to me, it's not as much an idealistic thing. It's what the ideals enable me to do. So in this case, I kind of have data freedom here. Data sovereignty is a big thing I talk about in the book. Um, if you want to pretend like you're in a, your own country of data and it feels free and then you have autonomy and but it, it really does hold practical merit to me that I have my own copy, uh, I know where it is, and because uh, I've taken great care to make it robust and reliable. So yeah, I, I, I think it's important to look at this and make it a practical venture, not an idealistic one. Um, there's a joke, let's see how this lands. Uh, how do you know? And I, I am, so I think I can tell. Okay, how do you know if someone's a vegan? <laughs> oh my gosh, that was perfect. <laughs> Thank you. They'll they'll tell you is the answer, and and I think it's it's detracts from our mission, if you will, if we're preaching. But um, if you get to the point where someone kind of asks you enough to beg you, then they really want to know, you know. And I I think uh, it's it's worth spreading. These are ideas worth spreading, and they do help people and. I mean, public money, public code is kind of a recent one, but I'm getting off. I'm getting off topic. So, questions so far? Okay. Well, it sounds like you guys want me to do most of the talking, which I'm prepared to do. Um, but I'm also, you know, prepared to workshop something you might be stuck with. Go ahead. Oh, somebody in the hallway. Uh, did anybody come with like a problem they want to work through together? No worries if not. I got plenty. Yeah, yeah, in the back.
secondary DNS service. Yeah, why don't we let's take let's take five and then talk about DNS. Um, who is like complete alien to DNS or like would feel pretty uncomfortable or do we all have a base level comfortability with DNS? Okay, so so what's your issue with DNS? You're wondering if you could self-host DNS? Yeah, you do, okay. Oh, so what are, you're wondering about options for secondary DNS. Okay, yeah, I don't know. Actually, that's a good question. Anyone? I mean, I, I go ahead. So some concerns about challenging might be um, having to deal with a lot of traffic. I'm sure there's security concerns too. Um, but yeah, I would think, because you can, so this is a client side thing where you specify your primary and secondary and maybe even more DNS servers that your your client or your network is gonna use, right? So, so each computer or router that tells computers where to look for name resolution is going to have Primary, probably secondary, but they can also have more. Is that we are we good so far? Yeah. Okay. I, sorry, I'm a little I'm a little out of date on computer science, but I remember the basics. Sorry, did you have a comment? No. Okay. So that's that's the basics of DNS and which servers you use. So any one you stand up could serve as a secondary. Um, are you wondering about services too, or just like what what else do you want to know? You're good. Okay. All right. <laughs> Next. Okay, well, let's do something I want to do and see if you guys can help me out. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Please. SDR, software defined radio, right? Yeah. So pause for a sec. So the, the idea here is how could you have uh, a VM or container running in Proxmox that you could pass through hardware to the SDR tools to deal with directly? Okay. So Ed uses dedicated Raspberry Pis. Proxmox has a USB pass through. Or a blacklist for drivers, right? Yeah. Okay, so I heard, I didn't, so, so check UDEV rules and kernel, basically kernel options. You have to look at what modules you're loading and if it's the right ones and check the options to them. Yeah. Ah.
FlightAware. Oh yeah, for tracking planes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, and the yeah. So good question. So the question is about your, say you're, you're at home and you want to self-host to people outside your LAN. Uh, how do you, like, what can, what can we say about the ISP connection that supports traf outbound traffic, enough outbound traffic to make it worthwhile? Is that fair? Okay. Yeah. I'm pretty lucky there. Um, Seattle Comcast is, or Seattle, what is it? West, Lumen, Century, whatever it is that, that nasty, uh, gigantic conglomerate uh it does pretty well with fiber so mine's unlimited but i did, that's a great question and uh can be quite tricky and you don't want to get i don't know like banning probably isn't that big of a deal but uh, i do it without a static ip so just dynamic dns uh, and just lucky to have unlimited but then again you know what i found to be more important so i wanted to sh i wanted to like stream home movies uh my brother's 2,000 miles away, and I said, hey, you can connect to my Jellyfin server. Pretty sweet Plex replacement. Um, you can connect to my Jellyfin server, but the videos would, you, it wouldn't trans, like, he'd say, oh, it's a 4K video, and now I'm going to stream it at 480p would be realistic to receive on his end, but transcoding would completely peg the 48 core server, you know, <laughs> with all the CPUs. So, uh, uh, for that one, it was more an issue of getting a GPU on my end and flipping that on, um, which Jellyfin is pretty good with working working with, and then and then it just reduced the bandwidth quite a bit. Um, but yeah, any other ideas? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I don't. So I make a, a really concerted effort in the book not to mention any companies that aren't paying me to mention them because I don't know. I mean, it's not fair. <laughs> uh, but they're, yeah, I don't know the answer to that. That's a good one. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay, so but th maybe that's a little bit of a pivot here. So yeah, so image hosting, uh, photo hosting, stuff like that, your home photos. Um, how do you consider self-hosting without giving up the features? I think I would back up a step and make sure that some of the values that you, generally it's a value-based decision or you know an ideological decision. I'm like, oh, okay, now I'm self-hosting because you can always do it for free with the big services, right? You're gonna, um, yeah, so I, I do spend a lot of time talking about why self-host. I think there's a whole chapter. So let me just pull up why you should self-host. And it talks a lot about the freedom to, to get to your data, to uh, say you need to re-tag all of your photos. You can do it in one batch operation if you have them on your server. Um, these are things I had to do. So, uh, oh, I went hiking one time. I'm like, where was that? And uh and where do I find the photos for that? So I knew roughly where it was within 10 miles and it was able, again, to go directly to all my photos, grab all the EXIF metadata, and just something that would have been quite difficult from a hosted photo service. So I, I share a few practical examples, not quite enough, but that said, okay, so I guess I'm kind of like, I, I try and help readers prepare for like, okay, buckle up because you will have to give up this or that. Usually it's usability. Um, and a little bit of work on your end. But honestly, the part of getting the server up and keeping it up, it feels so simple now, now that I have a, a technique and tried and true methods and, and uh, solid practices below all that. And it's generally applicable. 
Um, but so that said, you might you will have to give up something, but not always. So in the case of DocuSeal, all I'm giving up is some company representing that they're like passing off responsibility to them. But I looked up the laws about this and uh, e-signing is like DocuSeal did all the work of making sure that e-signing is legally binding. And yeah, you're actually okay if you use their software too. And you don't really have to use DocuSign, even though you might think you do. So in this case, I didn't, I felt like I didn't have to give up anything to use DocuSeal and it felt quite empowering. With image hosting, it's mainly like compatible with compatibility with other people, right? Because there's this network effect that giant tech companies take advantage of that is very hard to overcome. And you can get pretty close though. Um, I really like memories and image. Those are incredible pieces of software. I mean, so much effort goes into making those as near as you can imagine a feature compatible with all the big players. Um, but yeah, I guess, I guess for me, it's a value-based decision that weighs on the side of self-hosting because of those benefits that I, I've run into, like I've, I've, I've run into a case where, oh, now I have to pay for this. Oh, they changed the service. Okay, now they started, they changed the UX or the U, they changed the user interface and the user experience so that I'm having more trouble finding my photos. Or they added something that I didn't ask for and now I search for coffee in my email and photos are coming up with people drinking coffee that I don't, that I know. I mean, it's like, I guess maybe I'm getting older, but the change that I didn't ask for is another reason I'm just like, I actually don't need all those advanced features. I need the autonomy. Like I can, I can, I know how to protect my photos and I want to be able to do that forever without any data rot, without any unknowing where they're going to end up, without any having to trust these third parties. I don't want to have to trust, like with DocuSeal, I didn't want to have to trust them that they would be kind with my IP address and my server stats that it was sending them. So yeah, I, I think it comes back to autonomy and data sovereignty, uh, data sovereignty, sorry. Um, but there generally will be something. So I, again, in the book, there, there are these checklists for how, you know, why should you self-host, why you should not self-host. And I just go in detail because you got to make that decision. And I guess another thing I would say when you get into that forest, you get into that jungle is don't stress about, like you can try this stuff really in a really lightweight fashion. I mean, I have a two minute video I just put up on how to get uh, a VM working. So you're like, not sure which hardware to use. Well, this, so this DocuSeal is running on a VM on this laptop that has uh, encryption certificates for HTTPS. It's running my reverse proxy and ev everything is all, it's all right here. So, I mean, there, there's generally not technical barriers. It's just like, oh, can I do this? Yes, you can. Try and make it easy. And um, once you have it running and you, you got the basics and also I'm, I'm building a, a whole network of people that are interested in this kind of thing and they're helping each other out. So you're all here today. Uh, I urge you to connect, you know, if you can, if you want to come on the chat, I mean, there's 20 or so people, a lot of them helped write the book. I mean, like they did reviews for me and they tested and it's just like, to me, I think that the issue today is spreading the word. And, and again, it's not about one particular method of hosting. I mean, even though I show you Docker Compose and Linux, I mean, whatever, you know, this is, these are broadly applicable, applicable concepts. And really the values beneath them are like, oh yeah, I did do that because, you know, I lost access to these photos because I, I got locked out and lost my password or whatever. I mean, like those are, those are real things and they really, they really hurt. <laughs> so yeah. Anybody else have examples? I love examples like proprietary company, they took my data and, um, if anybody has examples like that, I'd love to hear them. Okay, so I'm gonna just real quick, uh, how's your Python, folks? Do, can you remind me how to like, I just wanna do, I wanna do the random drawing between, what is it? One and 10, how many do we have now? 12. 12? Okay, does anybody like, okay, if you get drawn and you don't want the book, you can give it to someone else. Okay, wait, oh yeah, sure. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, oh, I like that. Okay. Okay. So those are, this isn't the real drawing yet, but so those are, 
it, sorry, it was 12, did somebody say? Okay, let's just make sure we're, we're coming up with the, the correct number of things here. Oh, this should be 12. Okay, I'm, I'm trusting that. Simple enough. Okay, and then we'll take the first one. Not going to do the drawing yet, though. Now you have to wait for it. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. I had, to see the, I had to move my mouse around a lot to see the random number generator, right? I just want to quickly flip through and see if there's anything I missed. Um, I'm having a lot of fun. I hope you guys are, too. <laughs> um, I have, I mean, literally days of, what can I do next? Uh, discussion. So there's no end uh, to what you could do next. I think it's it's very important to uh, bite off what you can chew and do it in the context of the people that are going to be using the ser your servers. So I spend a lot of time talking about, well, who are your users and why? And why do they give an F about Docker? Well, they don't. I mean, so they have to... Uh, they have to be uh, carefully abstracted from that. But I think it's also very important to have a backup because we're all going to die someday and um, and hopefully later than sooner. But, I mean, have that person uh, help you out, you know, take turns, and it's a good idea to share and learn. Uh, I'm pretty lucky my partner is is uh, uh, way smarter than me and you knows computer science and math. And if you're lucky like that, I mean, make it a joint venture because – I hear from people like, oh, I want to do this. And that. I mean, that's great. But like, try try if you can to do it with others. I think like maybe maybe to me, it's like a purpose on earth is to connect with others. But this is a chance to do that too. And I think that's something that we miss when we just, we we hop on our phone and we send a quick, you know, we put up a post. And I, I suppose I'm preaching to the choir here at this conference, but just just remember why that company enables you to do that. You know, it's generally is like spoiler alert. It's generally profit, right? They they need your engagement to get your data to advertise to you to make money. I mean, that's like one of the most common formulas. There's many other ways to do it, but it's great to just sidestep that and give other people the power the, to do it too. But they got to be on board. So spend time getting to know them and what they want, and and work with the people around you. Like I I, I look at computing is just another way for humans to connect. So and self hosting is kind of a just a brilliantly uh, freeing way to connect uh, around stuff that really matters to the people you're sharing with. Okay. So, okay, do we do the drawing yet? No, I'm gonna save it to the last minute. You gotta, you gotta stay. You can't leave. Okay. Go for it. Okay. Okay. Nice. And, um, Senior to OSU, VPS. So just translating, go ahead. Yeah, so doing, doing some different things that okay. I do a lot of like web app development kind mm -hmm. of stuff. Mm -hmm. And you had mentioned earlier um, web app development software that makes it easy to set up, right? Yeah. And, and, and services that are easier to set up and responsive to set up. Um, that's cool. And I was just curious what you, what you think is like the, the golden child of that. What, what is the best way to Make your services to set up. So I've made. So if you make your own web service, how do you make it easy to set up for others to set up? Oh yeah. Right, like I just a container file that goes out, mm -hmm. so that makes it a little easier. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was just wondering. <laughs> uh. Any way that people install software, make yours installable that way. I mean, that's like the ideal. I think that's the golden answer. So the the question is about um, ease when you're if you if you uh, create and distribute a service that's self hostable. How do you make it easy for people to do to self host it? Um, I mean, so yeah, in the context of this book, and I talk about like what's good for self hosting. Let me just pull that up really quick, and it is a bit about. Um, Oh, let's see. I got this thing. Oh, yeah. So sidebar, traits of good self-hosted services. Okay, so it's a lot about the instructions, too. Like, you you tried it. You took down notes. You have what works and what doesn't, pitfalls, all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, do you guys, can you, is this big enough to read here? Just want to share that. So there's a number of these kinds of checklists in the book where, you can apply a rubric to a new situation. Um, 
But I mean, so selfishly, I would say like, okay, can I just grab the Docker image? Can I, I mean, like if I wanted to try Nextcloud, they've made it so you just do sudo Docker and I'm not even in my VM. I'm just on my laptop, Docker run dash P 80, 80, 80, something like that. I'm just going off memory. Next slide. So if I run that, I will have a locally running Nextcloud server that I can use and test. And I use this to repro bugs all the time. And so, and then after the first time it downloads, you know, probably a gig worth of image. <laughs> the next time it starts up is instant and you can repro bugs very easily that way. So I think it's very common to have a Docker image, but, um, uh, and especially one that can be used with Podman that's not rooted, you know, that's, there's all sorts of uh, things you can do, but there's there. So back to the original answer, I think, I think if, if there's a way people install stuff, you try and, sorry, you try and get someone to help you like, Hey, okay. You have BSD free BSD or whatever. I mean, and, and you need jail, you need a jail and this, okay, well help me do that. And, uh, I think if the software itself is is gathering attention if it's if it's gaining momentum, then somebody will. You have to make a way for them to be able to contribute and step up and do that. But they'll come to come to it. I don't know, man. There's so many snap app image this that. Oh gosh, it makes your head spin. But when I when I started self hosting, I just kept coming back to like, oh, there's. It felt like Git in the old days. Oh my gosh, so many people are using it. It's just you might as well also do a, a Docker image. So if that's fair, so. I mean, props to pod pod man and all other ways to um, contain services because the real lesson, the real um, take home is that containing has value, right? Like, like segregation of services. Okay. Sorry. It's time. We're going to do this. You ready? Drum roll. Okay. Here we go. Five. Who's, who's five? It's yours. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs>